All right, we are back with a new video. And today we are once again covering the circle and updating the power rankings following the third batch of episodes and the last batch of episodes before the finale. And this was a bit of an interesting week. We definitely got a lot of game talk, certainly a lot more eliminations than what we got the last week. And at this point, I think I have a decent idea of who the contenders are coming into the finale, but we'll just have to wait and see. But obviously we have nine players to rank and without further ado, let's get right into the video. So starting off at number nine, we have the first boot from this week. And here we have Alyssa and there isn't really much to say as well. She was blocked pretty quickly into the first episode, which was to be expected. And I said in last week's rank rankings how I felt like Alyssa was more likely to be blocked between her and Carol, despite uh, me putting her a bit higher on the power rankings from last week. But even so, it doesn't surprise me to see her go out here. I mean, yes, she did have a solid relationship with Brew, but I feel like Brew had a closer relationship with Carol, you know, like with him actively talking about how he doesn't care that Carol is a, is a catfish. And also, I feel like he may have seen Carol's better for his game in the long term, as again, Carol is a big target that could be downvoted later on. So there's that. In terms of Alyssa, I feel like she played fine. I mean, I, I'll definitely talk more about it in my player ranking at the end of the season, but I felt like she definitely had some good reads. She was pretty quick to pick up on Carol being a catfish, and I felt like she did some good work in building social bonds, but by the end of it, I felt like she didn't really do enough to solidify bonds with really anyone in the circle. I mean, while she definitely had some allies, I felt like other people were definitely closer to others than to her which made her primed to be taken out in this format. So it's not too surprising to see our god here. And it's a big reason she's here at number nine. Now we're moving on to number eight and we have the second boot from this week. And here we have John also known as Carol. And it's sort of crazy how they were literally just involved in the uh, safety chain uh, blocking at the beginning of this week only to immediately be uh, booted the very next cycle. So that's a bit interesting. So obviously at the beginning of the week, Bruce saves them, saying he has a better relationship with them. Yulin gets in an argument with them after the circle chat uh, is on Team Peach for the fitness challenge, which really doesn't matter. Everson tells them that he likes their handling of their safety chain and says he wants to save them. The two of them bond, rates Brew first, and in turn, Brew rates them first, given he trusts them, rates Frank third, Rachel rates them last, rates Yulin last, and ultimately, they finish last in the ratings. They and Everson are not chosen for safety, leaving them on the block. The two of them get to meet each other while they await their fate, meaning Everson finds out they are a catfish, tells Everson that he doesn't trust Yu Ling following the Alyssa blocking, but ultimately Carol is blocked, and before leaving, they tell Everson to align with Brew and watch out for Yu Ling. So on the whole, obviously Carol is a pretty big player on the season and a pretty big force throughout a lot of it. Now, I always had my doubts about their actual win equity, both in the sense of them being a big player, but also them potentially being seen as a threat that could be downvoted at the finale. And obviously we saw it play out where really by the middle of the second week, everyone, pretty much everyone in the game knew that they were a catfish. But obviously there was varying levels of acceptance for that with Brew literally saying that, you know, like, that he doesn't care that Carol's a catfish. While on the other hand, you got people like Alyssa and Nathan really wanting to target Carol for being a big threat, or at least that's what we were shown on the show. And I feel like Carol didn't do the best job of threat management. I felt like they made it very, very obvious from early on that they were playing the game through their constant alliance building, which really made people suspect that they were a big player, even outside, you know, the catfish suspicions. So at the end of the day, it's not too surprising to see God here. Although I am a little surprised they didn't at least make it to the finale, where again, they could be downvoted. But for this list, they are here at number eight. Now we're moving on to number seven, and we have the final boot from this week. And here we have Brew. And it's sort of funny how literally we had three boots this week, and it was all people that was involved that were involved in the safety chain blocking with Brew, like going out after making the decision. But obviously, looking at the week, he chooses to save Carol over Alyssa. Alyssa visits him, and she doesn't have any hard feelings towards him. Talks about how Carol was someone he trusted a lot. Admits to the other players that Eliza visited him. The others are understanding of his decision. Although Yuling is trying to throw him under the bus. 
Yuling approaches him and tries to patch things over, but he sees this as passing the responsibility onto him over blocking Alyssa. He tells her that her decision to save Rachel in the safety chain made him question the strength of their alliance, prompting him to save Carol instead. Yuling defends her decision, saying that Rachel would have been in danger as a new player. He doesn't buy this and he questions where he stands compared to Rachel. Even so, they do adequate work at repairing the relationship. Is on Team Peach for the fitness challenge. Frank approaches him to shore up their relationship. They talk about how Alyssa was blocked, and he mentions how it was a tough decision. Frank opens up about, about his personal life, which he appreciates. Carol rates him first, given how he saved them during the safety chain. In turn, he rates Carol first. Yu Ling rates him second, as she feels like he has her back. Ultimately, he finishes sixth in the third rating, second to last. Yu Ling chooses to save him after the blocking, defends Carol, and the fact that he knew Carol was a catfish, which doesn't go over super well with a lot of the players approaches Frank and Yuling and tries connecting with them. After the art challenge, approaches Everson and Amani. It's mostly a game of two truths and a lie. Obviously, they really bond over that. Approaches Nathan and the two of them check in following the challenge. When asked about Nathan's portrait, the two of them agree about how mean Yuling's portrait was. Nathan presses him over who made the portraits, where he suggested the new players. Uh, rates Yuling first in the fourth rating. Everson rates him second. Yuling rates him third. Nathan rates him last, thinking it's one of them going home, rates Everson last, and ultimately he is blocked due to being last in the ratings, and a big reason of that is due to Nathan, for some reason, tanking his game, thinking that there's no use in keeping Brew around, even though they were close, which we'll talk about that in a moment, but on the whole, I felt like Brew played an all right game, I mean, he was never really in the driver's seat, I mean, yes, while he was likable out there, and he did show some decent awareness of what was happening in the game, he was never really le able to leverage that into strong relationships, which led him to be consistently like in the middle of the pack or, you know, like in his case, the bottom of the ratings week after week. And I mean, admittedly, I'm not too sure if he wins the game, if it gets to the end, as certainly him being lower in the ratings definitely makes him an option to be rated up. You know, like if people want to downvote some of the bigger threats coming to the final, but maybe people recognize that people like, you know, like Yu Ling, for example, who want to take that spot instead so that's an option at least maybe nathan is someone that wants to take that spot so that could explain that as well and again i mean i feel like brew was more likable than i thought he was going to be and this was obviously a big week for him with him trying to play the game but ultimately being unable to get off the bottom and again he didn't play super well but he definitely showed a lot of awareness despite him being a genuine figure but it's because he was blocked that he's here at number seven. And with that, we are now moving to the six players still in the game. And as usual, I'll be ranking them based on how likely it is that they'll win the game from this point. But similar to last week, uh, they decided to end this uh, batch of episodes on a cliffhanger right before it blocking. So it's not entirely clear who will be blocked, but we know that someone will be blocked immediately at the start of the finale, which why? But at number six, the person I think is the least likely to win the game from this point is Alex, also known as Nathan. And I feel like this was a pretty bad week for him, all things considered. So looking at what happened, he's on Team Eggplant for the fitness challenge. Yuling approaches him and flirts. The two of them ex even exchange pictures to do so. Rates Rachel first. Rachel rates him fourth. Amani rates him fifth. Rates Frank last. Approaches Rachel afterwards and thanks her for saving him during the safety chain. Is glad that Rachel brought up Yu Ling and asks her about the new players. Learns that Amani doesn't trust Carol very much. Says that Brew doesn't give much information in the game. He doesn't like that Brew trusts Carol so much. And ultimately he finishes 7th in the 3rd rating. Yu Ling chooses to save him. Is called a catfish during the art challenge, which is technically true. Approaches Frank to hopefully align with people that are high in the ratings. During the talk says he admits to have not talked more with him. Blaine's Brew for driving a wedge between Frank and him. Uh, Brew approaches him. The two of them talk about the portrait. He tries getting information on who made the portrait, but Brew is slow to give him answers. Brew suggests maybe it's Everson and Amani, given they made him feel like a third wheel. Rates Rachel first. Yuling rates him last. Rates Brew last. Brew visits him after being blocked. He admits to putting Brew last, assuming it was going to be one of them, which why tells Brew he wants to come into the finale, being the smallest threat. But now, with this being a double blocking, I mean, it's looking like he could be in danger here, especially with Frank being the super secret influencer. Now, admittedly, I mean, we did see him build the relationship with Frank, I mean, to the point where maybe Frank saves him and maybe uh, blocks Everson over him, which I think probably will happen, but we'll have to see. 
But the reason I have him here at the bottom among the players still in the game is that I don't think he's winning the game at this point. I mean, I feel like, yes, while he's been shown being hyper strategic, I feel like he's made some pretty questionable reads, namely his decision to throw Brew under the bus for seemingly no reason. So I understand it from the perspective that both he and Brew are sort of fighting for similar spots in the sense that they are people who are generally underestimated in the ratings. And obviously you want to come into the final rating wanting to be surrounded by big threats, people that will probably vote each other down and probably vote people like him up under the assumption that maybe maybe they won't be as highly ranked at the end of the day, given they historically have not done very well, only to come out on top. So I kind of understand from that perspective. But the other thing is that Brew was literally his closest ally and probably would have upvoted uh, Nathan regardless in the follow rating and by voting him out here and completely throwing him under the bus, like he's really giving himself virtually no one that is willing to upvote him that much. I mean, yes, we'll have to see what happens with his relationship with Frank, but I feel like it's just not going to be enough. I mean, I mean, I guess Rachel, but like even then Rachel didn't rate him too highly in any of the ratings. So, I mean, that's not particularly great. The fact that he is, he seems to be closer to Rachel than Rachel is to him is definitely a worrying sign. And again, I don't really see that many people upvoting him super highly, even after getting rid of Brew. And by getting rid of Brew, he's definitely getting rid of someone who would rate him highly. So that's a pretty big knock on his game. And again, there's not even the guarantee that Frank will take the Bontes built and take him to the finals. So that's a bit of a worry as well. And that's a big reason that I don't think he's winning. And that also... I mean, again, he's sort of been undercut in the edit with, again, such as his relationship with Rachel and how Rachel isn't that close to him. And also like him, like throwing Brew under the bus under the assumption that it's survival mode, which I don't think that's really how you want your winner to be presented. So it's not looking great. And that's the big reason I have Nathan here at number six. Now we're moving on to number five. And we have another player who I'm not feeling too great about at this point, but here we have Everson and I'll say that sort of similar to what I did last week I feel like Everson despite him not being at the bottom of the player still in the game I feel like he's actually a bit more likely to be blocked in at the beginning of this finale than Nathan is but even outside of that I don't feel like he has much of a shot of winning so first up I mean he was on Teen Peach for the fitness challenge approaches Carol and tries connecting with them he particularly compliments their handling of the safety chain and says he wanted to save them the two of them bond. Amani approaches him and the two of them flirt. Rates Amani first. Yulene rates him six. Ultimately, he finishes fifth in the third rating. So again, we're just going through all the people that were at the bottom of the ratings. He and Carol not chosen for safety, leaving them on the block. The two of them get to meet each other while they await their fate, meaning he finds out that Carol is a catfish. Carol tells him that they don't trust Yulene following the Alyssa blocking. Ultimately, he is spared over Carol. Carol, Carol tells him to align with Brew and watches out for Yulene. Talks a lot about his family with them. After the art challenge, Brew approaches him and Amani. Rates Amani first, rates Brew second. Frank rates him fifth. Brew rates him last, rates Yuling last. And now, again, while he isn't at the bottom of the rating, he is now at the mercy of Frank. And that's not particularly great. And, you know, it's sort of hard to say where his fate really lies because obviously we saw Frank rate him relatively low on the rating. And obviously that opens up the door for someone like Everson to be blocked. And in general, like throughout his time here, like he hasn't really built that many bonds. Like I feel like he's sort of in a similar spot to Brew where, yeah, it seems like people like him and they don't really have much reason to not trust him. However, he hasn't really solidified bonds at a point where, you know, like people are rating them highly and it hasn't really translated to the ratings all that much. And, you know, some of that could be because of his late entry into the, into the game, although we'll talk about his fellow partner in a bit but obviously it's led to literally in both ratings him being in quite a bit of danger supposedly and obviously I feel like Frank is a bit more likely to block him over Nathan so we'll have to see what happens there but again even outside of that now again he doesn't really have many allies that are willing to rate him too highly I mean I guess Samani could rate him first assuming he survives over Nathan but even then like who's voting ever since first like outside of someone who people assume isn't going to do that well and again we'll have to see what happens but I feel like you know like even though like he is someone that could be upvoted in order to downvote the big threats or in to allow someone to vote strategically I mean is it really gonna be enough I don't feel like there's enough people that are genuinely 
upvoting Everson because they're his close ally or anything. So we'll have to see what happens there, but I'm not feeling too great about him. Plus the edit hasn't really gone out of, out of its way to highlight him. And that's a big reason that I have him here at number five. Now I'm moving on to number four and we have a bit of an interesting person to talk about. And here we have Trevor, also known as Amani or Everson's partner. And I feel like Amani is a bit more likely to win at this point as they seem to be a bit better positioned in the circle. I mean, they're probably not going to be blocked and I feel like they have some potential to be upvoted coming into the final. However, I feel like the edit hasn't really gone out of its way to highlight them too much. Is on Team Egg plan for the fitness challenge. Rachel approaches them and Yuling. They feel like Yuling is a powerful player given her connections. During their talk comes off as someone that wants to flirt with Everson. Frank approaches them and thanks them for saving him during the safety chain. The two of them connect over their dating lives, walks away finding Frank very likable, approaches Everson and flirts with him. Everson rates them first, feeling like as new players they'll have each other's backs. Rates Frank second, rates Nathan fifth. Ultimately, they finish fourth in the third rating. Frank chooses to save them. After the R challenge, Rachel approaches them and expresses concern about Yu Ling, as well as her relationship with Brew, assures Rachel that she's on their side. Afterwards, Brew approaches them and Everson. Everson rates them first, wanting the new players to sit together. Rachel rates them second, fearing they won't be as well connected, and ranks Frank fourth. And now, obviously, his their fate is in Frank's hands. And again, I feel like Frank is probably going to save Amani. I feel like they are, Frank is way more likely to block either Nathan or Everson, the situation over Amani. And they're coming to the finale in a somewhat decent position. Now, the main knock I'll have against Amani is that I feel like they don't have as many close connections. I mean, yes, we have their connection to Frank. I mean, that's something. They also have Everson, who is very loyal to them and probably will upvote Amani in the finale if they get there, of course. And again, they probably seem like a decent option to be upvoted here. I mean, I don't think people are really going to see them as that big of a threat. Even so, I mean, I don't feel like the edit has really propped them up the same way as the other players. And even though they have only had one week, I feel like that one week hasn't been overly exceptional. Again, they just seem to be doing all right. Probably will do all right in the final ratings, but probably not going to win. I could even see them like finishing second in the final ratings, if I'm being perfectly honest. But we'll just have to see. But for right now, I decided to have them here at number four. Now I'm moving on to number three. And for me, I feel like this is a pretty definitive top three. I feel like the winner will most likely be one of these three, but it's just a matter of the order. But at number three, I decided to have Rachel here. And again, I feel like Rachel is someone who is pretty well connected and someone that can probably do well in the final rating, but I don't really feel like they're going to win in terms of uh, the week's content is on Team Eggplant for the fitness challenge. Approaches Amani and Yuling, ultimately builds an alliance with them. Rates Yuling first, Nathan rates them first, given they've aligned. Rates Nathan fourth, rates Carol last. Nathan approaches her and thanks her for saving him during the safety chain. Mentions that she talked to Yuling, which Nathan appreciates. Nathan feels like they're on the same page. When asked about the new players, says that Amani talked to her about Carol and how they don't trust Carol. In turn, says that Brew doesn't give much information. Ultimately, she finishes third in the third rating. Frank chooses to save her, is accused of spreading drama during the art challenge. After the art challenge, approaches Amani, admits that she was surprised by Yu Ling's painting as it paints some doubt in her mind. She also didn't expect Yu Ling to save Brood to first during the last blocking. Frank approaches her and Yu Ling. Yu Ling suspects Nathan made her portrait, prompting her to say that Nathan could potentially be a catfish. Frank mentions Nathan's conversation to her. Nathan rates her first, seeing her as an ally. Rates Frank first, rates Amani second. And on the whole, I mean, for the most part, this is all pretty good stuff. I mean, I feel like Rachel is someone who has a lot of uh, good relationships in the circle. And I feel like that will translate to the final rating where, again, I feel like the top two people will be talking about. Yes, they probably have done well in the previous ratings. However, I feel like there is one person who will probably be downvoted. However, I don't think Rachel's super likely to be downvoted given how they seem to be doing well enough in the previous ratings, but not so high that they're seen as a big threat. I mean, they haven't been influenced or anything, so there's that. And I feel like there are people that are willing to upvote her to a degree. However, I feel like, again, I feel like the edit just hasn't really done much. And obviously there was the whole family visit where she definitely got some good content there, but I feel like other people got better content as a result. And I feel like there's some level of hesitancy with putting her at number one. I feel like the top two people 
have had better storylines for a win. And I feel like through that, Rachel may be a bit less likely to come out on top. But I feel like she is still someone who should do well in the final rating. And because of that, I have her here at number three. Now we're moving on to number two. And it is the same top two as last week. I feel like these two players are probably the most likely to win. Largely to their edits, although also based in part on their games. But at number two, we have the person who I think is probably going to be seen as the bigger threat and more likely to be downvoted. And here we have Frank. And I feel like Frank has played pretty well during the season. I mean, and he's gotten a pretty strong edit to boot. I mean, if we're looking at his edit from this past week, I mean, he's on Team Peach for the fitness challenge, approaches Amani and thanks them for saving him during the safety chain. The two of them connect over their dating lines. Amani feels like he's very likable, approaches Brew to show her up their relationship, brings up the fact that Alyssa was blocked. After Brew expresses regret over being blocked, he opens up about his personal life, which is what Brew was looking for. Rates you link first, Amani rates him second, Carol rates him third as they don't have a strong relationship with him. Nathan rates him last as he doesn't want know where he stands. Ultimately, he finishes first in the third rating, uh, becoming an influencer along with Yu Ling. They get e they get each get to save two people first. He chooses to save Rachel and Amani. Brew approaches him and Yu Ling, where Brew tries connecting with them. It's called the Snake during the art challenge. After the challenge, Nathan approaches him. Nathan throws Brew under the bus to explain why he hasn't talked much with him. Approaches Rachel and Yu Ling. The three of them express concern about Nathan. He gets a decent segment during the Thanksgiving dinner talking about his grandfather passing away. Rachel writes him first, seeing him as a genuine person. Writes Yu Ling first. Uh, in turn, Yu Ling writes him first as well. Amani writes him fourth. Writes him Everson fifth. Ultimately, he is first once again in the rating and becomes the secret super influencer, giving him the sole vote to block. And again, this is all pretty strong content for him, where again, he gets continues to get pretty strong game content with him building relationships with most of the players and in turn a lot of the players really liking him to the point where they're rating them highly in the ratings and there's also the personal content as well where he's gotten a lot of pretty strong personal content talking about his family i mean both during the family segment but also later on when he's talking about his grandfather passing away during the dinner so there's that and again there's a lot of decent content for him like that suggests that he could be the winner however the main reason i decided to drop him from this past week is that I feel like he's probably going to be downvoted. I mean, there's certainly people who see him as a big threat, and assuming those people vote strategically, then certainly he's going to be downvoted uh, in the final rating to the point where he probably doesn't win. However, again, he's gotten such a positive edit for a lot of the season, again, both gameplay-wise and personal content, to where maybe they vote him up regardless. However, it's just the uncertainty of him being a big target coming into the finale, that makes me a bit hesitant to put him in number one. So because of that, I have him here at number two. And now at number one, the person I think is the most likely to win the Circle Season 4 is Yu Ling. And again, it's a pretty interesting week for Yu Ling, where Alyssa blames her quite a bit for not saving her during the safety chain, even though Brew was technically the person to block her, tries defending herself in the Circle Chat, saying Alyssa was the one she connected with, the others view this as phony. She tries throwing Brew under the bus, gets in an argument with Carol, later approaches Brew and tries patching things over with the safety chain. Brew tells her that her decision to save Rachel in the safety chain made him doubt their alliance. She says she chose Rachel because she assumed as a new player, uh, Rachel would have been in danger, which makes Brew question where he stands with her. They do adequate work or playing the relationship, although Brew doesn't fully trust her. He is on team Eggplant for the fitness challenge. Rachel approaches her and Amani. Amani suspects her of being a big player given her connections, talks to them about how she flirts with Nathan, approaches Nathan to flirt with some more. The two of them even exchange pictures to do so. Rachel rates her first given she's had her back. Frank rates her first as well given how he trusts her, rates Bruce second, rates Everson sixth. Carol rates her last given their argument after the Alyssa blocking. Ultimately, she finishes second in the third rating, becoming an influencer along with Frank. They each get to save two people first. She chooses to save Brew and Nathan, which is a bit questionable, but whatever. Brew approaches her and Frank, where he tries connecting with them, is presented as a game player during the art challenge. Frank approaches her and Rachel, tells her that she suspects Nathan of making her portrait. Brew rates her first, grateful that she saved him. Frank rates her first, seeing her as an ally. Rates Frew, Frank first, rates Brew third, rates Nathan last, Everson rates her last. Now obviously Brew's uh, blocked and Frank is a secret super influencer. 
So again, it is looking pretty good for Yuling now. Granted, there was some negativity early on in the week with her getting the argument with Carol, and then later with Bruce saying that she doesn't trust her. However, again, that is sort of rectified by the fact that while well, one, Carol is blocked soon after, and two, while well, Bruce also blocked, I mean, we literally see Bruce still trusting Yuling even after these things come into play to where he still feels comfortable rating her highly in these ratings. So that's something at least. And yes, while it's a bit unfortunate that she loses Brew, I mean, I mean, it's a bit of a mixed bag anyway. So I feel like she has some allies coming in regardless. I mean, Frank trusts her quite a bit. I mean, there's also people like Amani, even Rachel that feel comfortable with you, Ling. Probably people that will probably feel comfortable rating her highly in the final rating, even though she technically is one of the bigger threats as well. Although I feel like with her having Frank in the final, I feel like that's definitely something that she can use to her advantage. People may rate uh, Frank relatively low, while she could argue that she's a bit under the radar as well. So there's that. And also she's getting positive content throughout the entire season, really. And obviously in this last, last episode, she got quite a bit of personal content with her family, all that was very strong for her coming into the finale, so that's something as well. And I just feel like compared to Frank, I mean, Yuling seems much more likely to be rated highly at the end of the day, whereas I feel like Frank is such a big target to where people will downvote him. I feel like Yuling still has enough people that are willing to rate her highly, but not to the point where she is labeled as a big threat. So I feel like those are all things that are definitely in our corner. And definitely big reasons that I think she is the most likely person to win. So because of that, I over here at number one. And there we go. That will do it for this week's video. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out with the channel. And again, the finale is this week, so stay tuned for that. I'm probably going to be doing a review and potentially a player ranking after the season. So stay tuned for that as well. Survivor is also wrapping it this week, so I'll probably have a review and player ranking for that as well. It's going to be a busy uh, week or two coming up, so a lots of content coming your way, so stay tuned for that. But for now, that is the video. See ya.